the same, same God. Listen. Oh my God. We've been learning. Keep playing, keep playing. We've been learning this week, this past, sorry, this past few months, it's about what it looks like to go through your darkest valley. Have a seat, have a seat. What it looks like. We've been reading Psalm 23 and We've been learning about what it looks like, what it feels like, what you experience going through your darkest valley, your darkest moment. I'm not the only one who has dark moments. And, and, and keep playing, Jordan. Keep playing. Hang, hang there for a second. And what we've been learning, and I don't think it's strange that we've sang this song, what we've been learning is that the same God of the mountain is the same God in the valley. The same God of the mountain. The same God on my best day. The same God when I'm, when I'm here. The same God when I'm just overjoyed. The same God when I'm praising him. The same God when I'm just so excited about what God's doing in my life. He's the same God when I'm frustrated. He's the same God when I'm upset. He's the same God when I feel betrayed. Come on. He's the same God when I feel like I don't understand what's going on in my life. He's the same God in my transitions. He's the same God in the midst of my secrets. It's the same the same God, the same God who performed miracles then will perform miracles now. The same God who healed before is the same God who can heal now. The same God who was Emmanuel then, who was with me then, is the same God who's saying, I'm still, I'm still Emmanuel. I'm, uh, yes, God. He said to tell you, I'm still Jehovah Jireh. When you sang this a couple months ago, Jaira, you are enough. I'm still Jaira, and I'm still enough. <sighs> still enough. Oh, my God. <sighs> God is all up in here. Forever enough. Always enough. He's more than enough. Forever enough. Uh, always enough. More than enough. I dare you just to shout that really loud. Forever enough. Always enough. He's been as loud as you can right here. Set. Forever enough, I don't change because I'm the same. One more time. Forever enough. Da -da. Hmm. Hmm. Forever enough. Sing that chorus right here. We're going to move on. Stand up, stand up, and you sing it. DeMarcus, run a mic over there to her. We just go flow here for a minute. Run over there, DeMarcus, run over there. Sing, I'm already in love. Yeah, you sing. Y'all help her out. I know what you've spoken. I know what you've spoken. Come on. I'm already in love. That is enough. 
One more time. One more time. I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you're smoking. I know what you're smoking. I'm already loved. More, More than, than I can imagine. imagine. And guess what? That is enough. Now somebody shout right here. Oh, my God. Jesus. It, okay, let me share this with you. If you're, oh, my God. If you're new here, I like to describe our house as a house of just peculiar people. We just flow with God. And we just believe that God is all in it. When you allow God to be all in it, he's all in it. And we just, uh, we just love the presence of the Lord. And we try to remain open. Hallelujah. So as we move forward. Thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for being a good God, for being a good shepherd. Yeah. Can somebody shout to the Lord right here one loud time? Right here, one, two, three. Now, Jesus, Jesus, now listen, glory, that's, that's, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, hmm, we've been learning that he's the same God, guys, we've been learning and reading about Psalm 23, where it speaks about the Lord being a good shepherd. We've been learning about what it means to walk with God. What you're hearing in a room is a response of walking with the Lord. We've been learning about what it means to trust in God with our whole life. We've been learning what it means to taste and see that he's good. We've been learning what it means not to lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways and all that we do, acknowledging the Lord, acknowledging the true and living God. And this God is king. And this king has a kingdom, and we're so blessed to be a part of it. Mm. Psalm 23, mm, yes, Lord, Psalm 23, David gave us this awesome tapestry of what it looks like to journey with the Lord, what it looks like to walk with the king. So I'm going to read it over you again. Psalm 23, I'm going to read the, the the Passion Translation. We're going to kick it off here. Yes, Lord. It says, Yahweh is my best friend. 
and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers me a resting place in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near a quiet brook of bliss. He gives me everything that I need. I can rest with him. I don't have to ask for anything. I don't have to want for anything because he's God who owns everything. Verse 3 says that's where he restores and revives my life. One version says when I'm with him, I can catch my breath again. Has anybody ever been in the presence of the Lord that just felt like you could just breathe again? It says, at that moment, he opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so I can bring honor to his name. He leads me, he opens doors for me, and he walks through those doors with me. It says, so I can bring honor to his name. What that means is that God, everything God does is so, is so that your life can be a living testimony of how good he is. Come on, laugh in the spirit. <laughs> even when, verse 4, even when my, your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear would never conquer me, for you already have. Woo! Your authority is my strength and my peace. That's the rod and staff part. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. We're going to jump to the Good News Translation. Psalm 23, verse 5 says, you, you prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see. Where's the table at? Let's go ahead and bring the table up. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see. You welcome me as your honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. The NIV version says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. That's fine. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Now, we're going to dig into this today. I ain't even got a lot, but we're going to dig into it. There's a seat at this table that God prepares for you, and it's for someone special. That special person is you. No one else can sit here but you. God says, I've anointed you to sit here at the table with me. I've called you out. God is saying, take your seat at the master's table. Now, last week, we, we started digging into verse 5. The first couple lines, and he's prepared a table for me. And what we had to understand was that verse 5 is connected to verse 4. They, they're supposed to be read together. Yea, though I walked through the toughest time of my life, we broke down what? The real translation, the Hebrew translation of what, yea, though I walk, it's not yea, though I walk through the, through the valley of the shadow of death. That was a mistranslation. If you look it up, it's a mistranslation. It says, yea, though I walk through my darkest valley. What that means, what David was trying to say is, man, when I'm going through the most toughest time in my life, I don't have to fear. When I'm going through pain and hurt, I don't have to fear. And I'm confused. I don't have to fear. When I feel betrayed by friends and family, I don't have to fear. When I feel like I've lost everything, I don't have to fear. When I feel like my mental, I'm at the capacity of what, in my mind, I feel like I'm losing everything. I don't have to fear. And he answers because God is with me. David taught us that we don't have to fear evil. We don't have to fear the outcome because the king of kings is with us on this journey. We don't have to fear the outcome because the Lord of lords is with us. And that's the thing that we forget. We forget that he's 
the same God. He's Emmanuel. He said, that's, that's what you should call me. I'm, I'm going to be born, and you're going to call me Emmanuel. He said that through Isaiah. I want you to, to understand from, from now until the end of days that I am the God who's with you. Will there be trouble? Yes. Will weapons form against you? Yes. Will you have hard times? Yes. But will these weapons prosper? No. Will trouble last always? Is this situation going to be the end of you? Watch this, John 16, 33. This is, here's your encouragement. In the New International Version, watch this, it says, In this world you will have trouble. This is Jesus talking. In this world you will have trouble. You will have a dark valley. It says, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. There will be times where it's going to get hard. There'll be times where you're going to feel uncomfortable. There'll be times where you're frustrated in your walk with God. He said, that, that's what's going to come. But don't give up. Don't let what the enemy says to you take over everything that you do. What the enemy wants you to do is to feel like this valley that you're going through is a punishment. The enemy wants you to believe that this valley that you're going through is a punishment. It's because you're unworthy. What the enemy wants you to do is to feel like this valley is going to be the end of you. But then verse 4, verse 4 says, and when I walk through this darkest valley, I don't have to fear the outcome. I don't have to fear what's going on because God is with me. That's why the Lord says in Psalm 30, verse 5, weeping may endure for night. This is still David talking. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So I was preparing, and God was like, you need to declare this scripture over, over the people. Everybody who attends, you need to declare this over them. I'm going to declare Roman 8, Romans 8 and 18 over you. It says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time aren't worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. We're going to make this personal. God is saying to you, I reckon that the suffering of this present time, what you're going through right now, I reckon that the suffering of your present time isn't worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. What you're going through right now isn't even, isn't even going to be worth having this, being the same conversation of what God's going to do. The situation you're dealing with now is going to be laughable compared to what God's, what God's bringing. Do you believe that? This is what the word says. I'm just telling you what the word says. What you're going through right now isn't even worth to be in the same conversation of what God's going to do. God says, because I'm God, I'm king of kings, I'm lord of lords. I, I conquered all of this. So going back to Psalm 23, verse 5. Watch this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Last week, we talked about what this table meant. We broke down, he prepares a table in the Hebrew translation. It says he begins to set order. That's what the table means. While I'm walking with God, he begins to set order in my life. That's the, this, he's given an image of a table, but what it means is he begins to set order in my life. The moment I begin to trust him, the moment I begin to follow him, God begins to prepare a table for me. He begins to set order in my life. Hmm. He begins to pull people out of my life. It's uncomfortable. He begins to bring people in my life. He may take a job away from me. He may give me a new one. It says, when you begin to trust me and when you begin to walk with me, as Psalm 23 says, I begin to set order in your life. He begins to manifest his will for you. Now, what does manifestation mean? Manifestation, watch this. Manifestation means when something crosses over from the spiritual realm to the natural. That's what manifestation is. God is spirit. When he begins to set order in the spirit, manifestation is the moment it starts crossing over into the natural. 
And what this table is, is a table of manifestation. God is saying, when you begin to walk with me and trust me, I'm going to start bringing forth my will from the spirit realm, and I'm going to make it tangible to you. I'm going to make my blessings tangible. You can see it. You can taste it. You can feel it. You're going to experience it. As you walk with me, I'm going to set order in your life so that you can start to experience my miracle signs and wonders. See, now we're starting to understand what this table means. It ain't just a, a, a beautiful picture of a, a good day with God. He's, he's really trying to explain what he does in the spirit. The key is we got to walk with him. And then watch this. He says, as we keep reading, he prepares a table for me. He says, I've anointed you to be here. I made a special seat for you. I've anointed you to be here. It says he's anointed my head with oil. It means you have a special place at this table. Now watch this. This is where it gets crazy. Last week, I'm just summarizing really quickly. He says, as you come to this table, I prepare a table for you. I begin to set order in your life in front of your enemies. In front of your enemies. When you show up to this dinner party with the Lord, all the ones who don't believe in you are there. Watch this. And I'm going to tell you why. The ones who are against you, the ones who don't believe in you, the ones who talk about you, the ones who lie on you, the ones who throw your issues back in your face, the ones who want to see you fail. God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bring forth manifestation in your life in front of all of them. God says, I'm not trying to, to, to do this in secret. The way I treat you, I'm, I'm not trying to do that in secret. Because I want your life to be a living testimony of my goodness. And they got to see it. Then we started breaking down last week the Hebrew translation of what it meant for enemies. It ain't just people. Watch this. It's a, in, in, in Hebrew, that word enemies meant afflictions, what binds you, what causes you to stress, what hinders you. So what that means is when I'm preparing a table for you and I'm setting order in your life, I'm going to do this in the midst of your self-doubt. I'm going to do this in the midst of your lack of faith, insecurities, low self-esteem, your generational curses, past hurts and pain, unforgiveness, your laziness, your, your hard childhood, your pride, your temptation, your secrets, your hurt, your pain. I'm going to do this in front of all of it. I'm going to do this right in the midst of it, right when you feel I'm not worthy enough. Right when you feel like, man, but, but, but God, this is what I'm dealing with. This is the pain I'm dealing with. Why would you prepare a table for me? God says, I'm going to do it right here. Right here so that you can know that I'm God. Remember, Psalm 23 says, and in the earlier verses, I'm doing this to bring glory and honor to my name. So I'm going to bless you in the midst of all of this. I'm going to manifest my will for you in the midst of all of your issues and problems. That's to come as you are. I'm going to do it right there in the midst of it so that you know that I'm God. I'm going to show you I'm a provider when you need provision. I'm going to show you I'm a healer when you need healing. I do this to bring glory to my name. And I bring glory to my name by doing, by being a good God through you and to you. So God says, I'm prepared a table for you of manifestation. Yes, Lord. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Psalm 23, verse 5, watch this. It says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. That's where we're going to hang real quick, and then we're done. I wanted to take my time and really expound on, on what this means. It says, when you come to this dinner party with the Lord, to this banquet with God, he says, the first thing that I do is I anoint you with oil. I anoint you with oil. Now, David had a specific meaning of what oil meant in the scripture. I know there are a hundred other meanings of oil, but we're going to talk about what David meant in context to what David meant. Okay, somebody yell out in context. Okay, because I know I'm going to get a hundred emails like, well, the anointing also means. I know. Satan's is crazy. They, they do that. As soon as I walk out the door, you know you forgot Psalm 34 when it said, I, I know, I know I only got a little bit of time, but come do coffee with me. Let's talk about it. Now, watch this. David, there were five different meanings of what David meant by, by the Lord anoints you to be at this table. First thing he does is he anoints you. Now, watch this. One is 
it means the anointing means you're an honored guest. You're an honored guest. There's an ancient tradition when back in those days, if you invited somebody to your house and they were royalty, they were an elder, they were a king, uh, uh, they were a priest, a prophet, uh, somebody who held high regard, the first thing you would do is to anoint them with oil. It was a sign to say, I recognize who you are. It was a sign to say, you know what, I'm the host and I'm honored that you, being who you are, has come to spend time with me. It's an honor for me to serve you. First thing they do is they would anoint you with oil. And what it's saying is, I don't, I'm not taking for granted that you, the special person that you are, has chosen to spend time with me because you could have chosen to go somewhere else. But you decided to spend time with me. And I believe God is saying, I'm anointing your head with oil when you get to this table because I'm showing you that I'm the host and you're my honored guest. All this is for you. It's an honor. God's saying it's an honor that you chose to worship me. It's an honor that you choose to praise me. It's an honor that you choose to walk with me. It's an honor that you choose to be with me in my presence. I love that. You're the special guest. I'm the king, but you're my special guest. Two, this oil also meant acknowledgement of your journey. When kings and priests used to come to the house of, when they visited someone, of course, back then they had to travel through the desert. They had to, they wouldn't just catch a bus and show up to your house. They had to make a journey to come spend time with you. And on the way, they got dirty, feet got dirty, smelling like outside. Yeah. But it's an honor that they came to visit you. And the first thing that you would do was you would wash their feet. Because when they, when they showed up to your house, they were, they were, hey, I, I've been outside. I smell like outside. My feet are dirty. I don't really want to mess up your stuff. Like, I'm probably funky right now. Real. That's what happened. So, the, so as, an, as a host, when they come in, you want to make them feel comfortable. So you wash their feet. And it says you will anoint them with oil. Oil was made of special fragrances, and it smelled good. There were herbs in it. And they would rub it on the guest so that they didn't smell like outside anymore. They didn't smell like the horse that they rode to get there. It was a way of acknowledging, I'm, hey, I acknowledge your journey to get here. I acknowledge what you've been through to show up and spend time with me. And I believe that's what God's saying. When I'm, I've anointed you to be here, I'm acknowledging right where you are. I'm acknowledging your life. I'm acknowledging everything that happened. I seen it. I was there. I was with you. It's real. Let's not dismiss it. The hurt was real. The doctor's report, it hit. A soft spot. Losing that friend hurt. That relationship not working, it hurt. It was tough on your mental. You didn't know what you were going to do. Having baby mama drama is tough. Having baby daddy drama, it's tough. You didn't get the check you were waiting on, so now you can't pay your bills. It was, it's hard. These are real situations, and, and what God is saying, I've anointed you to be here, and, and I'm saying that I acknowledge what it takes for you to spend time with me. I acknowledge your sacrifice to be with me. I'm not dismissing what you've been through. God's saying it couldn't have been easy, but I'm grateful that you came. Kick your feet up. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about how, how this journey hurts you. Kick your feet up. Spend time with me. Stay a while. I'll take care of it. How do I know this is true? Why do you think Jesus went off on Simon in Luke 7, 46? When Jesus showed up to Simon's house and watch this, because this, now, this, now this whole scripture is going to make a lot of sense to you now. Jesus showed up to Simon's house with the disciples and the woman, Mary, comes up and 
she begins to worship and praise the Lord and says that she washed his feet with her hair and her tears. When Jesus walked in, she said, God, I know you're king. I know you've come to spend time with us, and I'm, I'm going to just pour myself upon you. Then it says, then she broke open her alabaster box upon him. If you look up alabaster box, the equivalent of the perfume oil that was in that box is about $30,000 today. She said, I, you're worth, you're worth my life savings, and I'm going to pour it all on you. Now watch, and, the, and now the disciples were like, wait, 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 wait. She a hoe. She a thought. She's not worthy to touch you. She outside. <laughs> she for the streets. She stay turned. She's not worthy to touch you. She's not worthy to be in the presence of a king. And Jesus looks at them as it pertains to this table. He says, hold on. Luke 7, 46, he says, you didn't greet me with a kiss. But she has not stopped kissing my feet since I arrived. Now watch this. Watch this. 46 says, you did not anoint my head with oil, Simon. But she has anointed my feet with perfume. He said, he's trying to tell him, like, I'm king. The first thing you should have done in tradition is to anoint my head with oil. You should have washed my feet. But it's crazy that the people who are close to the Lord, we forget how to honor our God. The ones who say that we love God, the ones who say that we, that we, get, we know the scriptures and we, we, we just all in God, but we forget how to honor God. I promise y'all, there's a whole nother, another sermon for another day. But how do we respond to the presence of the Lord being with you? He was trying to tell Simon, Simon, look what she's doing. She's been worshiping me, worshiping me since I got here. You've been, you've been around me. Y'all know me. But you've got to common with me. So what God is saying, we're going to preach on that another day. But what God is saying to you about, uh, I'm not too common with you. I'm not common with you. When you show up, I'm going to anoint your head. I'm going to make sure you're okay. Because you're my honored guest. And I'm grateful that you chose to spend time with me. I'm grateful that you decided to trust me. I'm grateful that you decided to walk with me. Now here's the third third meaning of oil in the scripture. It means protection, comfort, healing, peace, and joy. How do I know this? Shepherds, when they are herding their flock of sheep, when they take them out, bugs would attack the sheep's face because they couldn't, they couldn't get through the wool. So there'd be bugs and parasites Flies will lay maggots in their nose, and the sheep would get so frustrated that sometimes they would start banging their head against a rock, killing themselves, just to soothe themselves from the pain. So what shepherds started to do was to rub oil on their head as a sign of protection, because the, the oil, just one oil from Kroger, it, was, it had herbs. <laughs> I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make it real to y'all because... Sometimes we, we, we forget that our oil ain't the same. They, the Lord said, you need to make oil like this in a specific way. Specific way. Oh, my, my peas is off today. In a sp specific way. Come on, it's all right. I'm going to get it out now. Come on, if Moses can do it, I can do it. So it had herbs and spices in it, and it coated the, their face. So that flies wouldn't land. Parasites wouldn't land. It was a sign of protection. So the, the way a shepherd protected his sheep was to put oil on them. Now watch this. This oil also had herbs in there for healing. So the issues that the, that the sheep did have, remember they got wool and they, they big old coats. They can't really scratch their face. The issue, what, what God used to do is he would put, what a shepherd used to do is he would put oil on their face for healing. He would put oil on their face for, for protection, and then that will bring comfort and peace in the sheep's life. And because of that, the sheep will begin to trust the shepherd more. 
And then God says, hey, I'm a good shepherd. I anoint you for protection. When you decide to trust and walk with me, you have a, you're coated in my protection. You're coated in my healing. I'm bringing forth healing from your journey. Whatever you went through, I'm bringing forth healing. And this healing is going to bring forth rest and peace in your life. Come on, we're going to talk about it. Somebody say, it's the oil. It's the oil for me. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. Yes, Lord. I only got two more. Joy. The fourth meaning of, of oil David was trying to explain was it, it was the oil represents the joy of the Lord. Isaiah calls the oil of the Lord the oil of gladness. Joy for mourning. Hebrews 1 and 9, New International Version says, You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. God says, I've anointed you above your enemies. I've anointed you above all the things that you're going through. And I'm giving you new joy. New joy. Up and out. New joy. Because you have set a table for me, I can have new joy. Now I can rejoice always. Like the scripture says in Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. Be thankful in every circumstance because at this table, God brings forth new joy. Have you ever met somebody who's just been in the presence of the Lord and they just got the joy? It's all on them. It's all on them. You're like, man, what's going on with you? I've just been in the presence of the Lord. God says, when you, when you decide to spend time with me, when you decide to walk with me, I start to birth a joy that's unexplainable. Well, wh well, this is going on in your life. Why are you so excited? Because I know God. Well, this is going on in your life. You should be curse God and die. But I know God. I know he's the same God of, of Jer of the, that defeated the, the walls of Jericho. He's the same God who, defeat these, who tear down these walls in my life. He's the same God. Come on. Watch this. Raise your hand in the room. We did this before, but I'm going to do it again. Raise your hand in the room if you've been healed by cancer. Healed from cancer. If you've been healed from cancer by the Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look around the room. That means the doctor gave one report and God gave another one, a separate one. So now that means if, 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 if ever the doctor gives me a report that I don't, I, I don't agree with, because I've seen these living testimonies, I got the joy of the Lord. I know, I, I know, because God is with me, I know he's going to take care of it. That's where my joy comes from. I can rejoice. We talked about that. Rejoice means to bring joy from the inside back to the surface. My God. Last one. Last one. This is a good one. The oil that David was talking about in Psalm 23, verse 5, it also means you're called out, you're special, and you belong to God. You're called out, you're special, and you belong to God. Being anointed by the Lord represents consecration. When God anoints you, he says, I'm setting you apart for a special work for me. I'm setting you apart because you're special. The oil in this scripture, that, that it represents God saying, you're mine. You belong to me. This is my house, my table, my chairs, and I've anointed you to have a seat here. What's mine is yours. I'm a king. And because you belong to me, and I call you son and daughter, you're royalty too. And everything that I have is now yours. And there's nobody who can pull you away from this table. I don't care what your enemies say. I don't care how you feel. There's nobody who can pull you away from this table. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 through 22, it says, Now, is, now it is God who established both of us in, and you in Christ, he anointed us. The anointing to sit at this table only comes from God. 
You can't work your way. Do good works ain't going to get you to this table. Only God. Only God walking with the Lord because he has to lead you to the table. This table of manifestation, this table of blessings, this table of, of, of promises being fulfilled. Only God can bring you to the table. And there's nobody who can pull you away from it. Somebody shout to the Lord. Watch this. It says, nothing, nothing can separate me. Romans 8, 31 through 35. Y'all like that scripture? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's some of y'all favorite ones. 38 and 39. I'm going to read it all. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son but delivered him over for us, for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? He's God. Why would he not give me all things? There's nothing that can stand against, stand in between me and God. It says, who will bring a charge against God's elect? That means who will bring a charge against who God anointed to be somewhere? If God anointed you to, to be at this job, who's going to bring charge against you? If God anointed you to do that work that you're doing right now, who, who can bring charge against you? It says, God is the one who justifies. Well, wait a minute. You shouldn't be sitting at this table. I was with you last year when you did. I saw the video on Facebook with, with you. I follow you on TikTok. You shouldn't have a. I seen you on Snapchat. You shouldn't be at this. You don't deserve to be at that table. You don't even know the word or nothing. You just now got saved. Why are you at this table? But, but the scripture says, God is the one who justifies. I'm justified to be at this table. The moment I started following God, he said that you are justified in Jesus Christ. I'm justified to be at this table. Who is the one who condemns? It says, Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is the right hand, who's at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. 38 says, for I am convinced. Woo. I ain't even going to read 38 yet. Wait a minute, because there's one more we need to read. Watch this. It says, 35 says, who will separate us from the love of God? Then 38 comes around and says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, keep it going, nor, nor powers, I can't see it, there or nor height, nor depth, nor any other, other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God. What can separate you from being at this table? What can separate you from God? Nothing. What can take your seat? Nothing. Nothing. Somebody yell out, nothing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stand to your feet. <laughs> so good. We're taking our time on purpose, guys, when we're dealing with Psalm 23. We've been talking about Psalm 23 for three months now. And we literally just got to verse 5 today, uh, last week. Next week, we're going to talk about, it says that I've prepared a table. He's prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints us. And we're going to talk about what it looks like when our cup begins to overflow. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. So let me encourage you. God has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And he's anointed you to be there. He's anointed you to be there. You're his honored guest. 
pull that list up for me, if you can. You're his honored guest. He acknowledges you to be there. He acknowledges your journey. He's bringing forth protection, comfort, healing, peace, and joy. He's giving you new joy to experience. And this anointing that he's giving you is saying that you are mine and nothing can separate us. Somebody should have said, thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Lift your hands really high. Just begin to tell the Lord, thank you for, for leading me to the table. Just have your own personal conversation with the Lord really quick. God, I thank you. Have your own personal conversation with the Lord. He says, I'm, I've welcomed you to this table. I'm calling you to this table just as you are. I'm calling, calling you to this table just, like, just as you are. I'm meeting you right where you are. God's saying, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how long you've done it. I'm willing to bring you to the table anyhow. There's a special seat for you. If you just come with me, I'll lead you to the table and I'll bring forth healing. I'll bring forth deliverance. I'll bring forth breakthrough. I'm a good shepherd. With me, you lack nothing. My desire is to bring forth peace and deliverance in your life. My desire is to release my goodness upon you. Before you were born, I decided that your destiny, my plan for you was for your good, was for you to prosper. All you got to do is just let me lead you to the table. Walk with me. Spend time with me. Mm. That's why I say in my word, worry about nothing, but pray about everything. Tell me what you need and thank me for the answer. God says, I wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. My desire is that you can have a life that you don't have to worry about anything, but you can always come and talk to me and tell me what your needs are. I want you to be honest with me. Tell me, tell me how you feel. Tell me what's frustrating you. Tell me what, what's, what's making you confused. Tell me what hurts. And because you can trust me, you can thank me for the answer. I said in Deuteronomy that I'm a promise keeper. I fulfill promises from generation to generation. It says, I have not failed Israel and I won't fail now. I've not failed my people. Why would I fail now? I've not failed my bride. Why would I fail now? I'm able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. I'm able. The able God who's king of all kings and lord of all lords calls you special and welcomes you as his honored guest to his table. Wow, what an amazing experience, an amazing word and teaching from the Lord, our good, good shepherd. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for being such a good shepherd to us. We thank you for the journey that we take us through, Lord God, as we follow you as the good shepherd. We thank you for your son that lives in each and every one of us as believers, Lord God. Lord, help those that may not know you now to know you to be the good shepherd that we know you to be in our community of faith. Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth now as it is in heaven. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, I am so excited 
for what is happening as a result of this message. If you want to support our house with a financial gift, we ask that you do so in whatever way it suits you best. But we do have a few ways for you to do that. We do have in person. You can send it to 5550 Reading Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45237. Or even better, you can come on by and drop it off yourself. We'd love to sit with you, to pray with you, to talk with you, and to get to know you better. You can also do it online at our website, www.tsmbchurch.com. Click on the Give tab and follow the simple, safe, and secure instructions. Also, you can do it via text. That's right. You can text one word, give well, to 94000. You'll receive a text in response that also has a link for you to follow and to give in a safe, secure way. And finally, you can do it via our app. We especially want those of you who are joining us virtually to download our app so you can stay connected. But you can also give via our app in the Give tab there. And the app is TSMB Church. You can find it, Google Play, Apple Store. You can do it there. We ask that you please participate with us virtually via our app. Again, we want you to stay informed, stay connected, and know that we love you and that the Good Shepherd loves each and every one of us. God bless you. See you all again.